My YouTube channel is called Squalid Suburbs. The definition of squalid is, one, of a place, extremely dirty and unpleasant, especially as a result of poverty or neglect, and two, showing or involving a contemptible lack of moral standards. Still by GDP, the largest economy in the world, the highest number of billionaires of any country, and some of the most sprawling displays of wealth in the modern world, yet across America's most famous and populous cities, homelessness continues to persist year after year, with bold promises from all spectrums of philanthropy, politics, and fame of housing the misfortunate. Nonetheless, these promises often go unfulfilled. Since 2016, total homelessness numbers have been slightly increasing year over year, with over 580,000 homeless in 2020. New York and Los Angeles have by far the largest homeless population, followed by Seattle. Looking specifically at LA, we can see that their homeless population has indeed been increasing at alarming rates. The Guardian a few weeks ago headlined, Los Angeles County is home to more than 69,000 unhoused people. They also note, however, that this recent number is believed to be an undercount. The footage you are now witnessing is that of Skid Row, which for those who don't know is located right in the heart of downtown Los Angeles. Hollywood, LA, the beach, the mystical and captivating palm trees surrounding the area, depicted for decades as a majestical and sought after land of adventure and bliss, almost like a tropical island one longs to see creep up over the horizon if you are lost at sea. Now, right in the very heart of downtown LA, lies one of the most squalid homeless encampments in the western world. And that's not to just bash LA for the sake of it. Speak to anyone who actually lives in LA and they may raise some very valid pros about Los Angeles. Endless entertainment, amazing weather, great beaches, awesome food. However, for outsiders who visit LA, it is understandable why they may come to quickly dislike it. To start off with, a lot of people have an unrealistic idea of LA of being some perfect paradise based off of movies. But a lot of the problems in LA are immediately in your face. The urban sprawl, annoying traffic, and the significant homeless problems become immediately apparent. One user on Reddit described his experience driving through the area. Skid Row was pretty crazy. I drove through there, San Pedro Street, which is the heart of Skid Row, maybe a year or so ago, and it felt like the set of a zombie movie. Trash was spilling into the street, people were doing the drunk shuffle in the middle of the road, and there were tons of tents everywhere. Skid Row and Venice Beach have always been pretty bad to be honest, but they've gotten many times worse and have spilled over into the rest of the city. Another user writes, I went to LA on holiday just before the shutdown occurred in March 2020, and I have to say it was probably the worst city I've ever been to. I was walking around the city center at night, and I just remember that the streets were full of homeless. I specifically remember a guy eating some food out of one of the bins on the street. Another user writes, I wouldn't walk around there at night. It's one of those places where if you have no business being there, people are going to wonder why you're there. Yet another, I'm in construction and have built some low income housing there. They aren't bad, but it's sad. Showing up for work at a construction site at 6am is the saddest part. They are coming down off whatever they were on and walking around in the middle of the street. It feels like a zombie apocalypse once the sun goes down. It's a tense city. Another user writes, the saddest place in America sounds like an accurate description. Driving through there, it looks more like an area in a third world country than a major American city. What makes it more striking and odd is that a lot of the surrounding areas are actually somewhat nice and desirable. The main part of DTLA, Arts District, and Little Tokyo all neighbor Skid Row. These are areas that have relatively expensive rents, nice shopping experiences, and expensive restaurants. Another user writes, It's just a lawless ocean of drug addicts, drug dealers, down and outs, and people in various stages of mental health emergencies. During the day, it's overwhelming, but relatively safe as long as you don't act like a mark and keep your head on a swivel. Depending on your look and demeanor, you would definitely be offered heroin or crack. Or you might get pressed on what you're doing down there, or become a victim of some light-handed manipulation or extortion attempting to separate you from your money or belongings. At night, it's absolutely horrifying. That's when the violence, revenge, sexual assault, and general chaos sort of bubble over all night. I wouldn't even recommend driving through at night for what could happen at a red light. I also read something very interesting in response to a post talking about how this warehouse was burned down because a homeless encampment caught on fire out front. The user called the LAFD and asked if they were able to expedite the clearing process as he was concerned the homeless would start a fire. And sure enough, that is what happened. The reply was, The theory that P2P meth is helping to fuel an ever-increasing wave of homelessness is of interest. It's cheap, more pure than it's ever been, with increasing reports of schizophrenia-like symptoms. All of that seems to track in homeless encampments by where I live. They're increasingly becoming more chaotic and overrun with hoarding of garbage, stripped bicycle frames, etc. Another reply to the warehouse being burned down was, possibly unrelated, but an FD employee once told me that that's how the homeless 
tend to settle interpersonal issues within their encampments when one of the aggravated parties won't leave. They eventually set each other's stuff on fire either to get that person out or in revenge for being cast out. Another story of a 20 year old female who writes, I walked close to Skid Row downtown alone during the daytime. The weather was lovely out and I had a coffee in my hand and thought, oh why don't I walk for 10 minutes to my destination and enjoy the day. Big mistake. I was approached by numerous homeless men who got very close to me. I've never felt so frightened in my life for my safety. I've traveled abroad extensively alone and still have never felt as unsafe as I did in downtown LA. Another user writes, you don't even have to drive through Skid Row to see how bad it is. You start seeing how scary it is a couple blocks away in the surrounding area. What makes it look worse is as the businesses close around the fashion district, arts and jewelry, etc., the homeless just move in. It feels very post-apocalyptic. Someone asked the LA subreddit what was the craziest thing you've seen on Skid Row and one of the responses was, watching the Bentley stop in front of the missions and hand out drugs. Watching as hazmat suits remove a decomposed body, the source I volunteer a lot down there. Another response to this post was, my brother went to hand out sandwiches there with his church group when he was in grade school and claimed to see a homeless guy accepting a sandwich with a needle stuck in his arm, blood oozing out and all. Imagine a fourth grader witnessing that. So I could go on and on with similar stories, but I think you get the picture. Skid Row is a place you want to have your guard up, and the homelessness continues to persist. I'm going to end this off here. Please subscribe for more School Out Suburbs, and thank you for watching.